Good evening, kids. Father, are you going to tell us the story of King David today? Hmm. I'm going to start with the story of David when he was young. I will tell you the story of King David tomorrow. Shall I begin? Yes, father. In the town of Bethlehem, there lived a man called Jesse. He belonged to the tribe of Judah and was the grandson of Boaz and Ruth. David was the youngest son of Jesse and he was in charge of tending his father's flock. David was a gifted musician too. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Hmm. Hey, little one. You don't look okay. What happened here? What's over there? Hmm. Let me go and see what's there. Huh? A lion? I'm not going to let him take my sheep. Hey, you! Look over here! Yes! Come here, you! Huh? <sighs> Is it dead? Hmm. David! David! Where are you? Huh? Who's that? David! Here you are. Elijah, my big brother. <laughs> David, it's been so long. How are you? I'm doing good. Tell me about you. What are you? What the? Did you? Did you kill this lion? <laughs> yes, I did. I killed it with a sling. Huh? You, you are so brave, David. God was on my side, big brother. Hmm. All right. Come with me. We need to reach home quickly. What happened, brother? Why are you in such a hurry? David, have you heard of Prophet Samuel? Of course I have. Hmm. He has come to our home and he is insisting on seeing you before dinner. Huh? Prophet Samuel wants to meet me? What could it be? I don't know, David. Let's hurry. It's getting late. You walk ahead, brother. I will get the sheep and I will be right behind you. <coughs> Prophet Samuel had a vision and he arrived at Jesse's house as ordered by God. God had chosen David as the next king of Israel and Prophet Samuel arrived there to anoint him as the next king. The God of Israel anoints you as the leader of his people. After anointing David as the king of Israel, Samuel left the house of Jesse. In the meantime, at Saul's palace, the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul and he became a very troubled man. He couldn't sleep and he had lost his mind. Master Samuel, please, please don't leave me. Uh, 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 uh. No! My Lord. Huh? Who? Who is there? Master, I have brought a musician with me. I thought music would give you some comfort. All right. What is your name? My name is David, my Lord. I am a shepherd from Bethlehem. Hmm. Come sit here and play your music. Thanks, my lord. David was a gifted musician. His music soothed Saul's troubled soul and he was able to sleep peacefully.
but everything was not going well in the valley of Elam. The Philistine army was camped in the valley and they had brought Goliath with them, who was a giant and a fierce fighter. Move aside! Make way for the giant Goliath! What was that? I... I don't know. I will go and take a look. Oh my god! What is that thing? He's so huge! Israelites! You slaves of Saul! Send forth your strongest man for a fight! If your man wins the fight, then you will win this war. If I win, then you shall serve us. What is he saying? He wants us to send our strongest man for a fight with him. But we don't have anybody as strong as that joint. Just look at him. He says that if our man wins the fight, then all the men in their camp will become our slaves. But if we lose, then we will have to serve him. Oh, how are we going to fight this giant? We don't have anyone who's as strong as him. Where is your stupid king? Elijah! Elijah! Huh? Hello, big brother. David! But what are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be looking after the sheep? I was looking after the sheep, but father wanted me to come here and meet you in person. What happened? Is he all right? Oh, yes. He... Israelite, where is your king? Is he afraid? Is he hiding somewhere? Who was that? How dare he insult our king? That is Goliath, the leader of the Philistines. He's been shouting like this for days now. But why isn't anybody coming forward to face him? What? Just look at him, David. None of our soldiers has the guts to face him. King has promised to marry his daughter to anyone who would kill this giant. Hmm. I will take that challenge. What? I said I can fight him. Are you crazy? Have you seen how huge he is? He will crush you in no time. Don't worry. I have God on my side. And as per David's request, he was brought before Saul. David, I admire your courage, but I thought you were just a musician. Do not be worried, my lord. I have killed many lions and bears to protect my sheep. Yes, my lord. David is quite skilled with his sling. He has really killed lions with his sling, my lord. Mm. All right, David. Bring my armor and shield. Let David wear them. Saul agreed to let David fight with Goliath, and he gave his armor and shield to David. What happened, David? My lord, I cannot walk with all these. These are too heavy. But David, how are you going to protect yourself? You need to wear those. Don't worry, I have God on my side. So David walked into the battlefield with just five stones in his bag and God on his side. <laughs> what are you doing here, kid? What have you got there? Stones? Are you going to chase some dogs? <laughs> Run for your life, kid, or else I will give you to the dogs. You can boast after winning. Let's fight. You have your spear and sword, and I have Lord on my side. Who? Huh? How dare you? I am going to crush you, you little dirt. You stupid Israelite. God, help me. Oh! Oh! Uh, 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 uh. 
What just happened? Is that giant dead? I think Goliath, he's dead. My brother, he killed Goliath. David killed Goliath. <laughs> we won the war. <laughs> we won the war. David killed Goliath with just a sling and God on his side. He took the sword from Goliath and cut off his head. The Philistine army ran away when they saw that their leader was dead. David, from now on, you will be my personal god and head of my army. I am honored. Thank you very much. I will be always grateful to you, my king. And as I promised, you may also marry my daughter. Thanks, my lord. Hmm. You can stay in this palace with my son Jonathan till the marriage. Yes, my lord. Jonathan, take David with you and show him the palace. Yes, father. Come with me, David. David. David, I saw how you defeated the giant, Goliath. You were very brave. I had Lord on my side. You're so humble, David. From today, we will be brothers, inseparable. My life for your life. I will never forget this, Jonathan. My life for your life. From that day onwards, Jonathan and David became inseparable. They fought many wars together and won all of them. Jonathan rejoiced at David's victories. The people of Israel became increasingly fond of David, and this didn't go well for Saul. He was jealous when people rejoiced and honored David's victories. Huh, now what more can he have but the kingdom? I must do something. Master, our army has won again. When they hear the name of David, Philistines are getting scared. Yes, father. David must be made the commander-in-chief. He deserves it more than anyone else. Jonathan, do you know what you are saying? What happened, father? There is no one in this whole world like David, and I love him more than my life. You and your love, you idiot. Don't you know that he will snatch your crown? So what, father? It's obvious that after you, he should wear the crown and not me. Stop it! I will give him the crown he deserves. Seeing that his own son was praising David, Saul's jealousy grew further. He secretly hatched a plot to kill David. I am going to kill him today. Hmm. People will think that I lost my mind as usual. Mm. Huh? Master? <sighs> Father, what did you do? Huh? <sighs> Someone came at me with a sword and I threw my spear at him. That's all. It's okay, Jonathan. You know how the king sometimes loses his mind. Are you all right, David? I'm okay. Come, let's go. Ah! Saul's jealousy quickly turned into hatred. Saul made several other attempts to kill David, but all of them were futile. And one day... David, your life is in danger. My father is determined to kill you. Hmm. I know. But I don't understand. What have I done for my master to hate me so much? It's because he knows. Know what? My father knows that Prophet Samuel has anointed you and you will be the next king. <laughs> Me, a king? I'm running for my life here. You, David, you'll be the king of Israel someday. But you must escape tonight. Hmm. I will, my brother. Thank you so much, brother. My life for your life. My life for your life. David decided to escape that night. And before leaving, he went to bid farewell to Mitchell.
No, dear. Please don't leave me. Mitchell, do not lose heart. I will come back when your father changes his mind. He'll never change his mind. He has become so blind with jealousy. Let me also come with you. No, dear. That'll be too dangerous. You have to stay here. David waited until everyone was asleep and go out through the window. Lord God, protect him. Huh? King Saul has gone mad. How else can he levise such heavy taxes? It's like we are giving money for him to squander. I'm tired of paying these taxes. Being a king, that madman thinks that he can do anything. But what can we do? If we don't pay, then our lands will be taken. Did you hear what he did to the priest of Nob? What happened? Just because Nob gave a piece of bread to David when he was hungry, his whole family was slaughtered. Oh God, he has really gone mad. There is only one way out. What is it? Let's join David. He is a kind man, and I'm sure he'll help us. Hmm. You are right. David is the only person who can help us from Saul. But how are we going to find him? Saul's whole army is unable to find him. I've heard that he's hiding in the cave of Abdullam. Let's go and look there. Discontent with Saul's rule and plagued with debts, many people came to meet David. There were about 400 people who came to seek the help of David. He took these men and taught them how to fight. David, please help us. That wretched king, he took everything. My land, my cattle, he took everything. Don't cry, I will take care of you. Saul now became suspicious of everyone around him. Instead of waging war against the Philistines, he turned all his energy on chasing David. How long, David? How long are you going to fool me? My lord, David and his men are hiding among these rocks. They can get out only through this path. Hmm. We will catch him tonight. Hmm. It's getting dark. Let's stay here tonight. We can catch them in the morning. You can sleep inside this cave. We will keep a watch outside. When everyone was asleep, David entered the cave without anyone noticing him. When he saw that the king was asleep, he took the spear and the pitcher of water that were kept near Saul. He could have easily killed the king there. Instead, he just took these two things with him and left the cave. Did anyone see my spear and the pitcher of water? No, my lord. We didn't take it. My lord! Huh? Who is that? My lord! David? Why are you hunting for me? Look, here is your spear and pitcher. If I could take this from you while you were sleeping, then I could have done anything to you at that time. Can't you still believe that I'm not your enemy? He's right. What have I done? David, my son, you are far more righteous than me. I will not harm you anymore. Saul realized his mistake and went back. But as soon as he reached his palace, he got a terrible news. <sighs> my lord, what is it? Master, the Philistines are here. What? Yes, master. An immense army of Philistines have camped in Ephek. Are you sure? Yes, master. I have seen them with my own eyes. Their army is huge. Don't lose your heart seeing their numbers. God will hand them over to us. Huh? No, Jonathan. Why are you looking worried, father? I think... I think this is going to be our last war, my son. Your mind is troubled again, father. Don't lose your hope. It's not that. I'm sure about this. Last night, Prophet Samuel came and told me that God has abandoned us. Father? Yes, my son. 
I'm sorry for everything that I did. What Saul told him was true. Israel lost the war with the Philistines. Saul's three sons, including Jonathan, were killed. It's all over now. I, I'm not going to let the Philistines catch me alive. Master. Who are you? I'm coming from the Israelite camp. We lost a war with the Philistines. And, and. And what? Tell me now. And the king and all the sons were killed. Israel is scattered to pieces now. What? No! When David heard the news, he mourned and wept until evening for Saul, for Jonathan and others. Even though Saul had tried to kill David, David honored Saul as God's anointed one until the end. Father, did Jonathan also die in the battle? Yes, Lucy. Jonathan too died in the battle. So, shall I ask you a few questions from the story? Yes, Father. Hmm. Let's see if you can recall this. How was David and Ruth related? Me, Father. Yes, George. Tell me. David was a grandson of Obed, who was a son of Ruth. Hmm. You have a good memory, George. Now, what was the name of David's tribe? It was Judah. David belonged to the tribe of Judah. That's correct, Matthew. And the next question. How did David come to the palace of Saul? David was brought to the palace of Saul to play music. Saul's soldiers thought that the music would soothe Saul's troubled mind. Very good, Lucy. Now tell me the reasons why Saul started hating David. David was winning all the battles and he was respected by everyone. And when Saul came to know that God had chosen David to be the next king, he started hating David even more. That's correct. Now that's all for today. I will tell you the story of King David tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. I am bored. Me too. Where's Matthew? Oh, don't worry. He's playing with Jimmy over there. Ha 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 ha. Now go and fetch this Jimmy. Come on. Hmm. Hey, I have an idea. What is it? Let's play as if we were Moses and his family. That's a great idea. I'll play the role of Moses and you can be Miriam, Moses' sister. Yes, that's fun. Alright, let's look the path. Moses always carried a stick. I need to get a stick. And Miriam wore a scarf. I'll get one. I need a long stick. Hey, that looks good. No, this is too small. I need something that's longer. Ha, that one looks good. Mmm, this is a good one. Now I'll look like Moses. Ha ha ha. God, my people are hungry. Please give us some food. God, my people are hungry. Please give us some food. Nothing. <sighs> ah. Can it be? No. George, George. Huh? So it was you who threw that stick. What stick? Oh, that one. I'm so sorry. I was playing fetch with Jimmy. That's all right. I forgive you. You what? Oh, we didn't tell you, right? We are playing the story of Moses. 
and who else is playing? Lucy is playing as my sister, Mariam. Can I play with you too? I'll be Aaron. Don't be stupid. Aaron was elder than Moses, but you are younger than me. Then I'll be Joshua, Moses' general. Hmm, that's a good idea. You can be my general. Now come with me, my general. Yes, master. <laughs> Are you? I went to get this. Now don't I look the part? You look okay. So what do we do now? Why don't we part this river? Yes, let me try that. Alright, we'll follow you. Lord! Me and my people have to cross the stream. Please help us by parting water. It's a shallow stream. You can walk to the other side. Huh? Did you hear that? God, is this, is this? Do you still want me to part the river? Father John, it's you? <laughs> Good, Good morning, morning father. father. Good morning, children. I thought it was God that I heard, but it was you. <laughs> I was just playing. So what are you guys up to? You look nice in that scarf, Lucy. Thank you, Father. We were playing as Moses. I was playing the role of Moses. See the sick? Hmm. And I am Miriam, Moses' sister. That's nice. So that's why you were wearing that scarf. And who are you, Matthew? I am Joshua, Moses' general. <laughs> you would make a cute general, Matthew. Do you know the full story of Joshua, Matthew? Is there more? Yes, of course. It was Joshua who had led people to the promised land after Moses died. Remember? Yes, but I thought the story was over. But didn't the Israelites reach the promised land after Moses died? Yes, but getting into the promised land wasn't that easy. Father, can you please tell us the full story? Of course. Mm, let's sit over there. Moses died before reaching the promised land. But before he died, Moses entrusted the task of leading the people to his general, Joshua. And Joshua finally arrived on the banks of the river, Jordan. Children of Israel, we will camp here at the banks of river Jordan. You can rest now. You can put down the back, my son. <sighs> huh? A boy is tired. I'm not tired at all, mother. Can I go to play now? Hmm. Please, mother. Please, please. <laughs> all right, all right. But don't go near the river. The current is too strong. Thank you, mother. Ha ha ha. Look at our boy. Thank you, God, for giving us such a good son. <sighs> what, dear? Our people should have trusted Moses, and because of what we did, we have been wandering for so long. Forty years. <laughs> this is so vast. How are we going to cross this? I'm grateful to you for showing me the promised land. Joshua. Joshua. Huh? Who? Who is that? It's me, Joshua. God? I have chosen you, Joshua, to lead the Israelites to the Promised Land. No. No, I can't. 
Moses was a great leader, but I, I am just an ordinary man. I can't lead them. There is greatness in everyone who has faith, Joshua. But I can't lead them. I'm frightened. Yes, you will face many dangers, but be strong and always remember that I will never leave you. And I'm grateful to you for choosing me to lead them. But please tell me, God, how are we going to cross this river? The river is very swift and it's very deep too. The people camped on the banks of the river. And is there enough food as well? Yes, sir. We have enough in stock for a few days. Hmm. God will surely help us. Huh? huh? Who are you? Huh? Go away if you don't want to get yourself killed. I, I think he is the king of Jericho. The king? I am Joshua, the leader of Israelites. God has promised us this land. Is that so? Well, I am the king of Jericho and I will never let you enter. We were liberated from slavery in Egypt and we have traveled this far following God's word. Please let us enter our promised land. The promised land? <laughs> Your God promised, not mine. Now get away before I call my troops. We have God on our side. <laughs> you and your God, do you see this river? Do you think you can cross this river? Huh? And if you manage to cross this river, then you will be facing our wall. We have the strongest wall in the world. So understand this. If you cross this river, then you better be prepared for a fight. Our God had protected our leader Moses and he will protect us this time too. <laughs> yes, I've heard about the Red Sea, how your God part of the Red Sea, but he has no power here. Stay away from Jericho or my army will destroy you. Joshua, what are we going to do? Don't worry. Have faith in our Lord. We will cross the river when God tells us to. We have full faith in you, sir. Hmm. But I'm worried about the king of Jericho. He's like the waters of this river. Dangerous. It's getting late, sir. We must head back to our camp now. Yes, let's go back. Joshua. Huh? You two walk ahead. I'll be right with you. Where are you, God? God! Do not be afraid of the king. If you trust me, then I will protect you. I do trust in you, Lord. Hmm. I need to know more about this king of Jericho. I have to know how huge his wall is. And also I must know how big his army is. Huh. I've got an idea. I'll ask two of my men to sneak into the city and see for themselves. Joshua selected two men to sneak into Jericho and tell him about the king's army. He also asked his spies to find more about the wall. Ouch! Why did you stop? Shh! Look over there. What is there? Ah! Hide! Quick! But King, what if those Israelites cross the river? 
<laughs> you really think they can? They will die if they try crossing it. Hmm, that's true. But do you think that God will help them? Nah, I think they are all making things up. I am their leader. Moses was a cunning man. He tricked those people to come out of Egypt. What was that? Food and meat from the sky? <laughs> they are all fools. I have never heard of such a thing before. But the parting of the Red Sea, there are many eyewitnesses. That must be a trick too. Now let's stop wasting our time thinking about those fools. We are getting late for the meeting with the council. Let's go. Yes, sir. Shh. Don't make any sound. Look there. Oh, the king is having a meeting with their army. Ha <laughs> ha Come on, start counting. Commandos, one, two, three, four. Foot soldiers, ten, twenty, thirty. Hoses, two, four, six. Who are you? Huh? Think we have been spotted. Answer me. Who are you? What are you doing here? We? We? Just run. Now he turns around and start running. Huh? They are spies. Catch them. Catch those spies. No! Ah! Hmm, my name is Rahab and I'm just helping you. But, but... There's no time to talk. Come this way, quick! Uh... <sighs> they must be somewhere around here. You, you go that way and I will go this way. Come, quick! Where is she taking us? I don't know. But what if she takes us to the king? What if she's lying to us? Under here, quick! Open the door, open it. They are here, quick, get under it. Let's go. Huh? By the order of the king, open this door. Open this door or we will break this down. I'm coming! What is it, sir? Move aside. Where are these spies? Spies? What spies? Did you see two men running down the street? Oh, those men. I saw them running towards the city gates. Everyone, they are headed towards the city gates. Get over there. <sighs> Rahab told the Israelites it was safe to come out of their hiding place. We don't know how to thank you, sister. Yes, it was a brave thing that you did. But why did you risk your life for us? Yes, why? We are just strangers. Everyone here in Jericho have heard about you. We know that you are coming for our land. We have heard about your God who rules the heaven above and the earth below. And we have also heard that your God is so powerful that he parted the Red Sea for Moses. It's all true, sister. Moses was a great leader and God was with him. We kind of miss him though. You must get out of town and hide in the hills for three days. Here, take this. You can use this to get down. Thank you, sister. God bless you, Rehab. You are very kind. Wait, one more thing. What is it? When your people attack the city, will you? Will you? Say it, sister. Can you please ask your men to spare me and my family? Sure. You have been kind to us, sister. We will ask our men to spare you and your family. Leave this red rope hanging from your window. 
it will be a sign that no one in this house is to be attacked. Thank you. Thank you so much. Joshua's spies did like Rahab had told them. They hid themselves in the mountain for three days. They went back to Joshua with their report. That's what Rahab told us, sir. Is it true? Yes, they are all afraid of us. They are afraid of our God. Let's thank God. He has done as he said. We are going to cross the river tomorrow. The next day, all the Israelites marched towards the river. Help us, God. Bring forth the Ark of Covenant. Joshua directed the priest to carry the Ark into the river and hold it there. Behold, the power of God. As the crowd watched, a miracle happened. The priest held up the ark and God separated the water. Mother, look! Wow! He is doing it just like Moses. God is with Joshua just like he was with Moses. Thank you, God. Joshua, you have to choose 12 men. Tell them to get 12 rocks from the middle of the river, from where the priest stood. Carry them and put them down where you stay tonight. From now on, your children will ask the meaning of these rocks. You will tell them what happened here today. You will tell them about the Ark of the Covenant and how the water parted when the Ark of Covenant was taken into the river. These rocks will remind Israelites about what happened here today. Come, son, quick. <laughs> Father, look at the fish. We have to get to the other side, son. Now come on. Come on, everyone, quick. Let's keep going. And so, every Israelite crossed the river. They set up a camp outside the walls of Jericho. It's getting late. We are all done, sir. That's good. One evening, Joshua was strolling outside the walls of Jericho. I have been following God's command without even a question. But how am I going to fight the king of Jericho and his army? Joshua. God, you won't need swords or armor, Joshua. You just need to have faith in me. You have to do as I say to defeat the king and the army of Jericho. Next day morning, Joshua asked Israelites to form a long line. Remember, do exactly as God has instructed. You shouldn't utter a word. You shouldn't make any sound. First, the seven priests marched to carry a ram's horn. Then the priest marched with the Ark of the Covenant. And behind them marched the soldiers carrying their arms. They marched one time around the city. Hmm, what are they up to? I don't think they are here for fighting. I think this is just a parade. <laughs> but, but why are they doing this? Ah, ah, don't worry. They are just fools. And they are walking away. Mm. I wonder what was the meaning of the all this. Come on, we have better things to do. When do we attack the city, Master? We are not going to attack it. We will march around the city again tomorrow. What? What? And remember, you must keep quiet. Not a word tomorrow. The only sound can come from this ram's horn. So the Israelites went to the walls again and marched around the city once.
<laughs> Every day for six days, they marched around the city once, but nothing happened for six days. You Israelites are fools, and the biggest fool is your leader, Joshua. <laughs> The people grew restless and on the morning of the seventh day and went to his tent. Joshua, can I come inside? Yes. Yes, please. Joshua, what are you doing? Our people are tired of this marching around the city. We need a soldier as our leader. Yes, a soldier who can lead us to a war. Yes, you are right. I'm not a soldier, but I have faith in our God. He won't let us down as long as we trust in Him. Today is the seventh and the last day. Who will come with me? I will. I'm sorry. We trust in Sir. All of us will join you. Tell everyone we will march today. And they did march. But this time, instead of marching around the city walls for six full days, Joshua asked them to march around the walls seven times. And during the seventh time around, they did something that surprised everyone. Everyone started shouting. Yell and scream to the top of your voices. Your voices should reach the heavens to thank God. Shout, for God has given us the city of Jericho. What is this? What are they doing? My Lord, look, the walls are trembling. Ah, I can't bear the sound. Ah, ah the sound is shaking. More noise, yell everyone. My Lord, look, the walls are crashing. What's happening? Run! Run for your lives! The world is coming down! Run for your life! Joshua and his men brought down the great wall with their voices. A few ram's horns and their faith in God. The Israelites captured Jericho. Joshua, thank you. Thank you so much. You don't have to thank me. Thank God. He's the one who did this. I merely followed his commands. Joshua, Joshua. Yes? This is Rahab. She is the one who helped us. Thank you, Rahab. Thank you for helping my people. Are we allowed to stay here? Of course you can. It will be our pleasure. Don't touch me. Stop, stop. Keep walking. You have no right to. Uh, uh, I am the king. No, you are not. We have this land now. When I told you that God has promised us this land, you laughed at us and you called us fools. You insulted our God. Look who's the fool now. Now walk. Ah, uh, no, stop. We are home. After Jericho was captured, the Israelites kept moving forward and forward, conquering more and more land, all because of Joshua and his faith in God. Wow, that was such a wonderful story. I'm glad you liked it, Lucy. Which story are you going to tell us tomorrow, Father? Hmm. I think I'll tell you the story of Ruth, Naomi tomorrow. I'm sure you're going to like it. Come on kids, it's getting late now. Get back to your houses. Quick, quick. Goodbye children.
I may be small in size, but I have God on my side. I've given you one last chance to surrender. If you don't, then you're going to die. What? You are not? Alright, then watch this. Get ready, Goliath. You are going to lose this battle. You missed it. You missed it, George. No, I didn't. Didn't you see? The stone touched him. No, it didn't. Now give me the sling. Yes, George. I saw it too. The stone didn't touch Goliath. Alright, now let's see if you can touch him. Huh? Haha, <laughs> did you see that? Yes, I did, Matthew. Haha, <laughs> your stone went in the opposite direction. It did? Haha, <laughs> yes. Don't worry, you can try again next time. I think there is something wrong with this sling. Good evening, kids. Hey, look, Father John is here. Good evening, Father. What are you doing here? Huh? Who is that? That's Goliath, father. Goliath? As in Goliath from David and Goliath? Yes, father. <laughs> wow, that's really good. And what are they doing with that cutout? I'm sorry, Goliath. We are practicing with our sling. See? Hmm, this is good. But make sure that you don't injure yourself while playing with this. We will take care, father. Father, are you going to tell us the story of King David today? Yes, but aren't you playing with your Goliath? We will stop playing. Please tell us the story, Father. Oh, you're that interested, is it? Hmm, come on, let's sit there and I will tell you the rest of the story. Are you all ready? Yes, Father. After the death of Saul, David became the king. He returned to Hebron and ruled there. Out of the twelve tribes of Israel, only the tribe of Judah supported him. Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, was ruling the rest of Israel. Civil war raged for years, but David grew stronger and stronger. But one of David's soldiers finally managed to kill Ishbosheth and brought his head to David. Your Majesty. Yes. I wanted to present you this. I killed Ishbosheth and brought his head as a present for you. Oh no. How dare you! Ishbosheth was the son of my master Saul. What reward shall I give to you for beheading a man in his sleep? God, behead him right away. But, but your majesty, please. He was the son of my master. God, take him away. David ruled over his kingdom just and fair. The people of Israel were very happy with David. Hey, did you hear what King David did to the soldier who killed Ishbosheth? Yes, our king is fair to everyone. We are blessed to have a king like David. God is with him. We must accept him as our king. Yes, you are right. Every other tribe in Israel is impressed with his work. You were right. I've heard that all the tribes are gathering at Hebron next week to acclaim David as their king. That's wonderful. We must go there too. All the tribes of Israel liked David and they gathered at Hebron to acclaim David as their king. Praise God! 
for giving us such a mighty king. And finally, after very long time, David became the king of the whole nation. The first thing that David did after becoming the king of Israel was to capture the city of Jerusalem, the fortress of the Jebusites. It became known as the city of David later on. We will call the city Jerusalem from today. Jerusalem which means the city of peace. That's a good name, my lord. A good name for the city of David. Hmm. We must repair these walls. They are not strong enough. Yes, they look quite weak. We will strengthen it by using new walls and moats. Find the best craftsmen to do the work. Yes, my lord. We will start the work immediately. Only if... Hmm... What is it, my lord? Huh? It's nothing. I have been thinking a lot about bringing the Ark of Covenant to Jerusalem. That's good thinking, my lord. If we can bring the Ark to this city, then Jerusalem will become the religious capital of Israel. But first we must consult with Prophet Nathan and seek his approval. Yes. I will ask Prophet Nathan to come here and we will talk about this. In the meantime, you must start the repair works. Yes, my lord. And as per David's instructions, expert craftsmen from all over the world were brought to build a palace. They used marble to build and the fortress was made secure with moths and ram dogs. But once the palace was built, David was bothered by guilt. Hmm, how can I live in this majestic palace when the Ark of Covenant is still in Hebron? I must bring the Ark of Jerusalem. I shouldn't have left the Ark there in the first place. We must bring the Ark to Jerusalem. Call the priest immediately. Yes, my lord. King David got the consent of priests and the ark was brought to Jerusalem. The ark reminded the Israelites of God's holiness and their need to obey him. David had to fight many battles in the early years of his reign. He was a wise soldier and a humble man who prayed for God's guidance. Prophet Nathan, my mind is disturbed. Why, my lord? All your enemies are defeated and your people are happy. And you have such a beautiful palace. This palace, that's the problem. What happened? What's wrong with this palace? How can I live in such a splendid palace when the Ark of God remain in a tent? Oh, don't worry. Our God prefers the tent. I know. But, but I want to build the beautiful house for the Lord, the most beautiful temple ever built on earth. Go ahead, do as you like, the Lord is with you. And that night Prophet Nathan received a message from God. Nathan. Huh? Nathan. God. Hmm? Tell my servant David, from the day I brought Israelites out of Egypt, I lived in the tent. You will not build a house for me, but I will build a house for you. I will secure your throne forever and rule Israel through your son. Thank you, God. God was pleased with David and through that message, he assured that David's heir will rule Israel. What? The Ammonites are refusing to pay the tribute? 
Haven't they learned a lesson from last year's war? We won't tolerate this insolence anymore. My lord, let's demolish Rabah, their capital. They will learn a lesson once we do that. Hmm. Go ahead. Surround their capital. Make sure that you don't destroy the capital. It might be of use later. Yes, my lord. I'm leaving right away. Hmm. Huh? Who is that beauty? She's such a beauty. How come I didn't know such a beautiful woman was living here? Right under my nose? Later that day, David had the woman brought to the palace. What's your name, dear? My name is Bathsheba, my lord. I am the wife of Uriah. He is one of the soldier. Ah, Bathsheba. What a sweet name. That night, David committed a great sin with Bathsheba, even though her husband Uriah was one of David's brave soldier. But two months later, Bathsheba sent word to David informing him that she was pregnant. David realized that his sin was creating more problems. Where is Uriah? He is in Rabbah, my lord, along with Joab. Hmm. Ask Joab to send Uriah to me immediately. Go now. No, I made a big mistake. What can I do now? Hmm. I think I will send Uriah to his wife and make him think that it is his child. You sent for me, your majesty? Hmm. So, how is the war, Urea? The Ammonites won surrender, right? Yes, my lord. All of them have camped inside the fortress. We haven't attacked yet. Hmm. They will have to come out someday. Here, drink this wine. Huh? No. Thanks, my lord. Are you refusing your king, Uriah? Huh? I'm sorry. David planned to get Uriah drunk and send him home to his wife Bathsheba. But Uriah kept refusing to go back home. Uriah, it's getting late. Why don't you go to your home now? Huh? Hmm. What's the matter? Tell me. I... I can't, my lord. Huh? But why? How? How can I go home, my lord? How can I go home to my wife when my friends and my captain is there in the battlefield? Uriah was adamant that he will not leave the palace, and he slept at the door of King's palace. David tried again to send Uriah home, but Uriah refused to leave and stood by his king. When David realized that Uriah will never leave him, he did an even more wicked thing. Uriah, give the scroll to Joab. We have waited long enough. It's time to attack. Yes, my lord. Uh, ah, ah, ah. And as David planned, Uriah got killed in the battle, and he married Uriah's wife. Bathsheba, Prophet Nathan, Your Majesty, how come you came here without a notice? Is there anything urgent? Yes, my lord. A grave crime has been committed in your country. Was it? Tell me, this is what happened. There were two men living in the same city. The rich man had flocks and sheep in great abundance. But the poor man had nothing but one fine lamp. 
the lamb ate and drank from his cup and slept on his chest. The poor man treasured the lamb like his daughter. But one day, when a guest came to the rich man's house, he took the poor man's lamb. No! What? I will not tolerate such crime under my rule. The man who did this must die. Hmm. Then you are the man. Huh? Yes, your majesty. God wanted me to speak to you, and these were his words. You were a shepherd, and I made you a king. I blessed you with wives and children, made you rich and powerful. Oh no! Why did you disobey me? You killed Uriah and took his wife. I will stir up evil against you out of your own house. Other men will take your wives and your child born of adultery will die. Oh no! I have sinned against the Lord. Have mercy on me. Oh God, please! Please wipe away my sins, my Lord. Please! David wept his heart out. His heart was broken when he realized his mistake. But in spite of his prayers, Bathsheba's son died. No! My son! Why did you take him away, my lord? Why? Don't lose heart, my dear. The Lord is punishing me for my sins. He will not abandon us. God forgave David for his terrible sin. Bathsheba had another child and they named him Solomon. God has forgiven my sins. Solomon, my son, after me, you are going to be the king of Israel. King David had many other children, but some of his children brought great sorrow to David. Wow, that's an amazing story, father. It's so inspiring. Yes, George. David was a God-fearing man. When prophet Nathan pointed his sins, he readily repented and was prepared to accept any punishment. Even in the midst of calamities, he did not lose heart and firmly believed in the mercy of God. So, King David is a model of repentance. Now, you like the story? Yes, Father. We loved it very much. All right. Now, shall I ask you a few questions? Yes, Father. Who can tell me the meaning of Jerusalem? Jerusalem means the city of peace. Correct. That was quick, Matthew. And what was the name of David's second wife? Her name was Bathsheba, father. Who was Bathsheba married to before becoming the wife of David? Bathsheba was married to Uriah, one of David's soldiers. What happened to Uriah? Uriah got killed in the battlefield. It was planned by David. Was David sorry for what he did? Yes, father. He was really sorry when Prophet Nathan pointed out his sin to him. All right. Now for the last question, what was the name of David's son born out of Bathsheba? Mm, it was Solomon. Tomorrow I shall tell you his story, the story of Solomon. Goodbye. Are you sure Matthew is at the church? Yes, he is hanging around with Father John. Oh, I hope he doesn't irritate Father John with his questions. Yeah, I know. He can be a little irritating sometimes. There they are. Come, let's go there. Good morning, Father. Good morning, children. Hello, Matthew. Hello, George. Father, what are you doing here with Matthew? 
I was just telling him about the book of Judges. Book of what, father? Oh, haven't you heard about the book of Judges? No, father, we haven't. Hmm. All right. Come here and sit down. I'll tell you a story from the book of Judges. Have you heard the story of Samson and Delilah? No, father. Who were they, father? Samson depicts the tragic fall of a mighty man. His birth was considered a miraculous event, and even before his birth, his life was dedicated to God as a Nazarite. The angels had warned Samson's parents to never cut his hair, and since Samson's life was dedicated to God, he was not supposed to drink wine, and he also shouldn't eat unclean meat. He was sent by God to protect the Israelites from the Philistines. Delilah, it's getting dark. We must get back home. Hey, look at that. Delilah, we must go back. What was that? Ah, uh, Delilah, over there. Oh my God! Oh my God! Delilah, run! Help me! Somebody help me! Samson, and I'll live nearby. Samson? Yes. What's your name? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Delilah. I'm from Philistine. Delilah! Delilah! Oh, you're alive. He saved me. You are Samson, right? Yes, I am. How dare you meddle with the affairs of Philistines? You should be thanking me. I saved one of yours. Now go away. <sighs> Come on, let's go now. Who was he? He is Samson, an Israelite. We rule over them. He is so strong. Samson was gifted with extraordinary physical strength. It was given to him by the God to save the people of Israel. The people of Israel had disobeyed God, and so God sent Philistines to rule over them. For 40 years, the Philistines had made the lives of Israelites miserable. But now, it was time for God to send the Philistines away. The Philistines had heard of Samson's strength. I tried to question him, but he walked away. That arrogant Israelite! We must teach him a lesson. We can't afford to let him go on like this. Yes, he could be a danger to Philistines someday. We must destroy him now. But we don't know where he lives. Hmm. Attack the Israelites and he will come to save them. The Philistine army seized Lehi, a town full of Israelites. They knew that Samson would come to save his people.
Please don't hurt us. Please. Why are you doing this? What wrong have we done? We will stop only when you tell us where Samson is. Samson? But we don't know where he is. You don't know? Then go and find him. Ah. We will have fun with your people until then. Now go. Yes, sir. We will find him. So, all the men from the town of Lehi, some 3,000 of them went up to the nearby mountains searching for Samson. Samson! 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 Huh. Who could that be? Samson! Who are you? What do you want? We are coming from the town of Lehi. The Philistines are attacking us because of you. What? Because of me? I must help them. Wait there. I will calm down. Yes, Samson. They are beating all our women and they are not sparing any children too. Please, Samson. Please come and save us. What do you want me to do? We have to tie you up and hand you over to them. Unless we do that, Lehi will be destroyed. Hmm. I shall come with you and you can tie me up, but... But what? But you must promise me that you won't kill me. Thank you, Samson. We promise that we will not hurt you. All right, then wait there. I'm coming down. And so they tied Samson with two new ropes and they brought him to the city. Here, sir, we have brought you what you wanted. Now please let our people free. <laughs> Not so strong now, are you? Uh. Take him to the city gates. We will hang him there. But suddenly, the power of God came over Samson and he broke the ropes around his arms as if they were thread. <laughs> there was an old jawbone of a donkey lying in the dirt. Samson picked it and swung over his head. Samson, I must go and help him. Samson, Samson. Ah, Delilah, Delilah. Yes, it's me. Wake up, Samson. Delilah, with the jawbone of a donkey, I killed a thousand men today. Yes. You are a great warrior, but you are wounded. Please come to my house. Where am I? This is Gaza. This is where I live. Please come with me. All right. Take me to your house. Delilah took Samson to her house and tended his wounds. Samson was blessed by God and his wounds healed quickly. The wounds have healed. He is much stronger than I thought. But the Philistines were getting restless. They were getting angry of all trouble Samson was causing. They had to find out what made him so strong. 
over a thousand men dead, more people injured. Who is this Samson? I heard he got his powers from God himself. Those stupid Israelites, they believe all stupid things. We must find the secret of his strength. Only then can we defeat him. Uh, uh, but how? Hmm. Let's go to Delilah. Maybe she can trick him into telling the secret of his strength. I think it's a brilliant idea. Only a woman can learn the secret from him. Do you think she will agree to help us? Who is going to refuse bags of silver? <laughs> After a few days, the leaders of Philistine came to Delilah's house when Samson was not around. Delilah, you must save our people from the hands of Samson. You are the only person in this world who can find the secret of his strength. But I tried. I have asked him several times, but he never told me the truth. Lie! You are lying! Unless you tell us his secret, we'll burn you alive. Ah! Ah! Have you forgotten the 10,000 pieces of silver promise? Mm. Ah! Leave her! Ah! 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 I did. I did my best. But he never tells me the truth. I tied him with seven new bow strings, bound him with new ropes, wove his hair into the wrap of the web. But, but... Stop playing games with us. We'll come back tomorrow. If you don't get the secret by then, come, let's leave. Huh? What am I going to do? That night, Delilah poured wine in Samson's glass and got him drunk. Samson, you have fooled me so many times. I wonder if you love me at all. Oh my darling, I love you more than I love my own life. No, you don't. You are just lying. No, my dear, it's true. If you really love me, then why don't you tell me the secret of your strength? My love, ask me anything but that. If I reveal that, then it'll be my end. Ah, my head! Why is it so? Tell me, dear. I'm sorry, dear, but I can't. You don't trust me? That's why you are not telling me the secret. I... I trust you. Tell me, dear. Delilah, my love, I'm a Nazarite. Nazarite? What does that mean? The Lord, the Lord has chosen me. I shouldn't... I shouldn't drink wine. I shouldn't cut my hair. I should always be at his service. Nazarite, huh? Sleep well, my dear. Your secret is safe with me. Shh! Shh! Here! Ask the leaders to come here. I have found the secret. Yes, I will. That night, Delilah summoned the leaders of Philistine and revealed the secret to them. It's his hair. Once you have cut his hair, then he will lose all his powers. <laughs> so it's his hair. Cut his hair now. Yes, my lord. Uh, uh, what? Did 
Delilah, Delilah, who are they? <laughs> Good job, Delilah. Here is your reward. Delilah, how could you do this to me? I trusted you. I'm sorry, my dear, but they threatened to kill me. I'm sorry. I... I should have never trusted you. <laughs> Where is your power now, Samson? You fool! Untie me and I will show you, you filthy Philistinian! How dare you! Hold him! Hold him! Leave me, you! I'm going to poke your eyes out. Let's see how you fight without your eyesight. No! No! Please stop! You promised me! We kept our word. We didn't kill him. And you got your money too. Now move aside! No! I will not let you! I said move, you! No! 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 Ah! That night, Philistine kings grabbed Samson and they did a terrible thing. They poked his eyes out, tied him with chains and dragged him away. They locked him in a prison cell and they put him to work turning a great wheel. Day after day, Samson turned the heavy wheel. Ah! 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 Delilah, how could you do this to me? I was sleeping so peacefully in your lap. Uh, why should I blame her? I'm the one who took the walls. Uh, my God, how many failures. I sinned. I broke my vows. Lord, be merciful to me. Please forgive all my sins. Please. <laughs> Samson realized his mistakes, but there was nothing he could do now. He was blind and shut in a prison cell. He had lost all his powers too. He prayed to God day and night seeking mercy and slowly his hair started to grow back. <laughs> that stupid Samson. He thinks his God is greater than our great God Dagon. He is a fool and he's rotting now in prison. This should be a lesson to everyone who stands against our God Dagon. I say we must celebrate. We must celebrate our victory over Samson. Yes, let's have a feast to celebrate our victory. The leaders of Philistine organized a feast to celebrate their victory. They thought their god Dagon had given them their victory over Samson. Of course their god had nothing to do with it. There is no god Dagon at all. Hey, listen. Let's bring Samson out here so we can have some fun with him. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea. It would be fun. Bring Samson here. Yes, my lord. Huh? Where am I? Keep walking. Uh. Take him to the stage and fasten him between the pillars. Yes and leave the chains long enough so that he can dance. Dance? <laughs> it would be fun to watch that blind giant dance. What? What are you doing? Uh, where am I? You are at the temple of our great god, Dagon. Uh? Dear people, the sacrifice is over! 
Now you can watch and enjoy the dance by Samson. <laughs> Huh? Start dancing, you blind giant! Yay, start! We are waiting! Dance, you fool! Ah! Oh. Yeah, beat him more! It will be fun to watch this giant dance in pain! Can't you hear? You are asked to dance! Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. <laughs> no! It's because of me. It's all my fault. The temple was crowded with over 3,000 men and women. And they were all having a great time making fun of Samson and his God. But Samson was quietly praying. Dear Lord, please remember me, your servant. My God, give me back my strength. Just one more time. Please God, help me this one last time. Please. <sighs> God gave him back his powers. And when Samson realized this, he walked between two large pillars and placed his hands on them, one on each side. Please God. gave away and the stones of the great building came crashing down in a thundering roar of cloud and dust. It all came tumbling down on the five evil kings and the evil people who were celebrating there. The rock fell on Delilah too. Samson too died with thousands of other people. And that's the story of Samson and Delilah. Did you like this? Yes, Father. So, shall I ask you a few questions? Who can tell me who the judges were? Judges were the liberators sent by God whenever Israelites were suffering. That's correct. And who can tell me what a Nazarite mean? A Nazarite is a person whose life was consecrated to the service of God. He would be under the vow to never consume alcohol, to never cut his hair and not to eat any unclean food. That's good, Lucy. And what was the secret of Samson's strength? Samson was a Nazarite and because of this, God had given him immense power. And how did Samson lose his power? Delilah tricked Samson into drinking wine and when he was asleep, they cut his hair too. Excellent, Lucy. Let's leave now and when you come tomorrow, I will tell you the story of Ruth. Who was that father? Was she an Israelite too? No, my child. She was not an Israelite. God does not favor any particular race. Ruth was a Gentile woman and she became the great-grandmother of King David from whose dynasty came the Messiah. We shall learn her story tomorrow. Goodbye, Goodbye father. Goodbye, children. Hello, Matthew. Good morning, Father. Why are you sitting here alone? Where is Lucy and George? Lucy is there. And George is over there. What happened? Why aren't you guys playing together? Lucy and George had a fight and they are not talking to each other. <laughs> is that so? And why did they fight with each other? Mm, we were playing hide and seek and Lucy is saying that George cheated. <laughs> mm, 
Now go and tell them that I want to talk to them. I will tell them, father. Lucy, Lucy. Lucy. Go away, Matthew. I don't want to talk to anybody. Lucy, Father John is here and he's calling you. I'm coming. All right, you go ahead. I have to call George also. George, George, Father John is calling you. Huh? Let's go then. Hey there. Good morning. Why are you silent? Aren't you going to wish me back? Good morning, Father. Matthew told me that you both had a fight. Is that right? Yes, Father. This George, he No, don't tell me the reason, Lucy. She's lying, Father. It was she. Stop it, George. Now listen. Whatever the reasons might be, I want you both to forgive each other and say that you were sorry. But father, Lucy, I'm sorry, George. I shouldn't have fought with you. I'm sorry too. You're my best friend, Lucy, and I'll never repeat this. <laughs> See, wasn't that easy? Thank you, father. Hmm. Now come on. Let's sit here. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of Ruth, a Moabite woman. She was an excellent example of how one should trust God. Her selfless love and total dedication to her mother-in-law is depicted as an example for all generations. Wow, tell us a story, father. All right. Now listen carefully. Long time back, in a place called Moab, there lived a woman named Naomi. Her husband had died a long time back, and now recently, her two sons too died. She was now left with the wives of her sons, Orpha and Ruth. There's no point of sitting here and crying. We can do nothing about it now, Ruth. You must listen to what I'm going to tell you. What is it, mother? My daughters, you're still young. Go back to your people and marry again. You can have children of your own one day. Mother, what are you saying? No, Ruth. Stop. You must do what I say. I'm going back to Bethlehem, and you can't come with me. But Why can't I come to Bethlehem with you? Because you're a Moabite woman, and in Israel, you'll always be a foreigner, my dear. Orpha, will you at least listen to me? I will do whatever you wish me to do. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much. Now, Ruth, please. Mother, please don't insist. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you die, I will die. Your people shall be my people, and your God will be my God. Oh dear! Ruth refused to part her mother, and they both traveled together to Bethlehem. Do you see that mountain, Ruth? <laughs> that one? Yes, that's Nebo. It was from there that Moses viewed Canaan. Nebo? Hmm. 
poor Moses. Why did you say that, Mother? Oh, that. That's because after leading all the Israelites from Egypt, he died there. He died at the threshold of the promised land. The God of Israel is the God of the poor. He will not abandon me. While they were traveling, Naomi narrated the history of Israel to Ruth. And after many days of traveling, they finally reached Naomi's house in Bethlehem. Hey, look! Who are they? Hmm, I think I've seen that face before. Hmm, isn't that Naomi? Yes, it's her. Come on! Naomi! Naomi, it's you! Naomi! You look so different! Yes, it's been so long since you left. Where is Elimelech and your sons? What happened, Naomi? No, don't call me that anymore. Don't call me, Naomi. My life has become like this ruined house. I had everything when I left here. But I've come back empty-handed. I'm no more Naomi, the happy one. I'll be called Mara, the sorrowful from now on. Don't worry, Naomi. It will be all right. <sighs> but the God hasn't abandoned me totally. He has left me with her, the wife of my son. She is a good woman. May God bless you. For many days, their neighbors helped them by giving food to eat. Mother! Truth, what is it? How long are we going to live on this charity? Yes, our neighbors are kind, but we mustn't burden them. Mother, I was thinking. What, dear? I was thinking that I can go and work somewhere. What? Yes, mother. Look, I'm healthy and I can work. But, dear, I can't bear that. Listen to me, mother. This is harvest season and I can go into the fields and glean. No, I can't bear to see my daughter glean in a stranger's land. But why should we be ashamed? You have told me that our God is the God of poor. That's right. But they might insult you calling you a foreigner. Mother, don't worry. I shall return by evening. God, father of orphans and protector of widows, please watch over my daughter. And that day, Ruth went to work in the fields. She started collecting the leftover ears of corn. It is scratching and I am thirsty. Where can I get some water? The field that Ruth chose to work that day was owned by Boaz, a relative of Naomi. On that day, Boaz came to the field to oversee the reaping. Who is that young woman? Oh, her! Do you remember your aunt, Naomi? Naomi? Wife of Elimelech? Yes. That young woman is the daughter-in-law of Naomi. She asked me permission to glean in your field and I allowed. 
Hmm, there poor widows. She hasn't taken any break all day. Hmm, I remember Naomi. She was a good woman and she was tried very hard. What's your name? Ah, uh, me? Yes, you come here. Yes, master. What's your name? My name is Ruth. I am wife of Naomi's son. I know. I am a relative of Naomi. Oh. You don't have to go anywhere else for gleaning. No one will bother you here. You may drink water from my servant's drawer. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. But what have I done to deserve this? You? You left everything and came here with your mother-in-law? Come with me. We'll have something to eat. Here, have this. Hmm, this is such delicious bread. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Can I take this bread to my mother? She will like this very much. Of course you can. Thank you. Boaz liked Ruth very much and he decided to help her. You pull a few ears of corn from the bundle and let them fall down. Let Ruth collect those. You have a good heart, Master. Lord God, protector of the weak, wonderful are your ways. Ruth, how was your day? And... And... How did you get so much grain? Ah... Uh, mother... Lord led me into the field of a man called Boaz, a very generous man. Did you, did you say Boaz? <laughs> yes, he told me he was a relative of yours. Yes, he is my nephew, my cousin's son. He was so kind, he gave me a lot of bread and roasted grains too. Thank you God. He also allowed me to glean in his field till the end of the harvest season. That's wonderful. Mother, let's give some bread and grains to our neighbor, Lady Maka. Yes, she is a kind woman and she helped us so much. Until the end of harvest season, Ruth gleaned in the fields of Boaz. She gleaned during the day and at night, she sewed clothes for the poor. Hmm. Let's go to bed, dear. You've been working all day. You go ahead, mother. I will finish this one and join you. But Ruth, look at you. You look so tired. Don't worry, mother. I will join you. Besides, tomorrow, we are having the harvest feast. Boaz has invited me to. Really? You must wear your best clothes and don't forget to put on your ornaments too. Ha <laughs> I will mother. Now you go ahead and sleep. This is big. Ha <laughs> ha! Huh? This is the biggest harvest we had had in years. God has blessed us.
God has been generous to you because you have been generous to poor people. Isn't that? Isn't that Ruth? Ruth? Where? I can't see her. Look at the front. No, I can't. Her? It is her. She is so beautiful. Yes, I too didn't realize that. Poor woman though. She has a good heart. She works all day and then she sews clothes for the poor. Hmm. I must pay a visit to her mother tomorrow. And the next day, Boaz came to Naomi's house. Good heavens! Boaz, my nephew. Hello, aunt. It's so good to see you. I I I am ashamed to receive you in this poor shack. Oh, aunt. The condition of this house doesn't matter at all as long as you are happy. Happiness? That is not for me. I I lost everything. Everything except this daughter whom Don't worry. I'm here to talk about that daughter. Huh? What about Ruth? I uh, I wanted to talk to you first. Um I like to marry Ruth. But only if you have no objection. Lord, you have heard my prayer. What do you say? Oh, Boaz, we will be honored, but but what? You know, as per our custom, my brother's son is the next of the kin. Your brother's son? Who? Sikri? Hmm, yes. As long as Sikri gives away his right, you cannot marry Ruth. Hmm. I didn't think about that. I'm sorry, Boaz. I want you to marry Ruth. I really do. But Hmm. I have to think about this. Don't worry, aunt. I'll talk to Sikri and figure out a solution. The next day, Boaz gathered Sikri and 10 elders at the city gate. Everyone the widow of Elimelak is selling a piece of land Sikri you are the next of their kin you are entitled to buy it Do you want to buy it Yes I will buy the land from Elimelak's widow And as you buy the land you are bound to marry her daughter-in-law She is a more abiet woman You must marry her and restore her late husband's name. What? Are you joking? Are you saying that I should marry a gentile woman? A foreigner? Yes, that is the law of Israel. If you buy the land, then you will have to marry her. Huh? No. No, I don't want the land. Huh? What? Are you giving up your right? Yes, I am. I don't want to marry a Moabite woman. Then you must swear it. Sikri, you must renounce your right in our custom. Give your shoe to Boaz. All right. Here. I hereby renounce my right to buy Naomi's land. and as a sign i'm giving my shoes to boas we hereby proclaim boas as the legitimate heir of naomi's property boas plan worked and sikri renounced his rights after a few days boas married ruth according to the law of moses and israel I accept you Ruth as my wife. I shall be faithful to you until death. 
May the God of Israel look kindly upon you. May you be honored in Israel through your descendants. Ruth and Boaz had a son, and they named him Obed. And Obed's son, Jesse, was the father of King David. That was a great story, father. Yes, father, we loved it. Hmm, now shall I ask you a few questions from the story then? Yes, father. Why did Naomi and Ruth go back to Bethlehem? Naomi's husband had died a long time ago and she lost her sons too. Naomi and Ruth had no one else in Moab and that's why she left to her hometown. Excellent, George. And was Ruth born in Bethlehem too? No, father. Ruth was born in Moab and she was a Moabite. Good, Lucy. Now tell me why Naomi changed her name. Naomi meant the happy one. When Naomi lost her husband and her sons, she decided to change her name to Mara, which meant the sorrowful one. Right again, George. Now tell me, how Boaz and Naomi were related? Boaz was Naomi's nephew. That was quick, Matthew. Good one. Hmm. Now tell me why Sikri refused to marry Ruth. Sikri did not want to marry a Gentile woman widow and that's why he let go of his right for Naomi's land. That's right again. And for the last question, how was King David and Ruth related? Boaz and Ruth had a son named Obed who was the grandfather of King David. That's correct, George. It's time for us to leave. Father, what story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Tomorrow? Hmm. Uh, I'll tell you the story of Samuel tomorrow, my child. Ah, the story of Samuel? Yes, the story of Samuel. We will meet again tomorrow. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. father.